cold out. <laughs> There's a tendency of people to think that doing God's will is simply a matter of taking off and getting your marching orders, as it were, and then running off and doing it your way. Or doing it according to what you think is the right thing to do because you've been taught, you've been given some kind of authority or responsibility or some kind of anointing. So you figure, well, you know, I've known God for, oh, you know, all my life, you know, and I think I'll just take care of this one. And uh, so you take that scripture that Jesus said that, you know, he's like a an owner who gives his goods to his servants and then goes on a long journey and then when he comes back he expects to get you know his percentage and his increase and so you figure that God has gone on a long journey and that he's far away and that he doesn't need to be contacted daily you know or doesn't need to be spoken to on a regular basis in order to discover how to do it it's a little more loving than that because you see we have our own idea about God we have our own concept of God in a way we have our own God so to speak and so sometimes the atheist or the scientist is right when they say that we create God because we create our understanding of God but there's still behind our understanding there's still a creator there's still God himself there's still the Father, there's still the Son, and there's still the Spirit. And the three are one. They are God. Now what that means, nobody understands. I mean, you could say all kinds of physical aspects, but then you're not really talking about the spiritual dimension. Then you could talk about spiritual aspects, but then you're not talking about the physical dimension. Then you can try to interrelate the two, and then you're not talking about God. <laughs> Because he created it all. So you're always at a less than perfect understanding. And that's kind of why, because we don't have a perfect understanding of God, we don't have the ability within our created image that we are to perfectly know what he's doing. That's why we have to check in with him daily. We have to walk with him in a simple way. We have to talk with him. That's why you can't have... A salvation experience you have to have a salvation process meaning that God is always saving you from yourself because believe me your biggest problem when it comes to salvation isn't going to be Satan and it isn't going to be principalities powers and demons and spiritual wickedness in high places it's gonna be you <laughs> you are your own worst enemy <laughs> trust me and so am I but in knowing that then you can deal with it so a lot of times knowledge is the key to understanding wisdom wisdom is being able to walk with God talk with God follow him and do as he says because wisdom chooses to follow he who possesses the greater amount of wisdom and that would be what a wise man would do he would want to seek to be more wise and so we tap into that essence of God that is his spirit that gives us wisdom in every situation because God said to us bluntly without any question or any certain circumstances having to come into play he said if any man lack wisdom let him ask of God who abradeth not and give it to all men liberally in other words he said you don't have to get some spiritual formula together you don't have to be some kind of genius to figure this one out all you got to do is ask me and you see that's kind of what your day is going to be like if you're wise you're going to ask him and then as you go through your day you're going to ask him but if you don't ask him you're stupid <laughs> yes I said stupid because if he already knows what the day is going to be like, if he's already seen it, if he's already experienced it, then why would we want to go through it without getting some 
instructions on how to deal with our day. And then, as we go through our day, we find those circumstances that are either a blessing or a curse or a challenge or, you know, rearranged in some way that we didn't understand. Why not check back in with the authority of the person who created the day and then ask him to lead the way? Because this is the day that the Lord has made. Remember that. We somehow, as Christians, forget this today is the day the Lord has made. That means because you're in it, he made it, and he can direct you in it. Because the footsteps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. Now, the direction of a man's heart may be his own, but that's your choice. However, because he knew what your choice would be, he can direct or he can order and put into place your footsteps. So as you walk with God today, learn to listen, seek, ask, and pay attention in some way to what God might be saying to you. Because he may want you to operate in your day a little bit easier than what you make out of it. And you'll find that every day becomes exciting when you realize this is the day that the Lord has made. It isn't something that just automatically happens. God put all this into the universe and it existed and now it's going to go on without it having to be needed by God in order for it to continue. The scripture says, by he upholdeth all things. In other words, he is what's holding it all together. God himself. You have inside your atoms a polarity that doesn't make any sense to scientists to this day. They don't understand what's holding things together. They like to say it's a gravitational form and then if you keep spinning it fast enough, it's going to keep binding itself together. And yet when they split it apart, they see that there's contrary circumstances within the particulates that are operating, that they should be resisting each other and repelling themselves far apart. And yet they stay together. He upholdeth all things. He does. We don't. According to our physical science, we're still trying to figure out how he does it. He just does it. Now, it is said that at the end of the age that this universe will quit to exist through the fervent heat. And most physicists already know that that's going to happen because they can't figure out what's holding it all together anyways. So, let's you in on a little secret. It's God. So, if God has so arranged the universe and he's holding it together, if God has so designed the day and he's causing it to happen, then he's involved in every single aspect of creation. He didn't just start it and let it go. He's in it all the way through it because he's delighting in you. He's delighting to see what you will do. Just like you have children. You know, you see them, you know, they're born, you know, and you you watch them in action, you know, and they get up and they stumble around, they fall down, you know, and then they kind of bounce around, you know, getting into this. and Oh, you try to get them out of that. Then they get into this over here and you try to get them out of that. Then they go forward, you know, and they bring you something that they're all excited about that they smashed all over their face and their clothes and you just go, <laughs> and you smile at them and you love them and you clean them up, you know. That's what God does with you. That's what your day is like as far as he's concerned because he already knows, he already understands. You don't need to be so wiped out about it. You just need to go to God with it. So today and every day, always turn to the Lord. Get back, get right, get with him, and get with the program. Because that's what he wants you to do. He wants you to always be with him and to keep in touch with God. Blessed is the man who walks and is not in the counsel of the ungodly, but his delight and his desire in the laws of the Lord and on his law. He habitually meditates day and night. He is happy. He is fortunate. He is prosperous. He is the most enviable of men because he's following the advice and the plans and purposes of God. Because the precepts and the instructions and the teachings of God are his delight. He studies them and he ponders them every day. Keep in touch with God today. Stay tuned to his voice. Turn on your God radio that you can hear some music in your soul. You may have a plan for the day, but God may lead you in a totally different direction if you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Be brave enough to flow with what you feel in your heart God wants you to do. 
One of the things that's interesting is that you can start off and God could get your attention in one direction where he says, and you felt like, you know, you go, oh, well, you know, God's telling me to go here, you know, to do this. And you go there and suddenly when you get there, you go, well, now that I'm here, God seems to be telling me something contradictory. Or it wasn't contradictory. It's just God needed to get you there. So whatever it took to get you there, now he can talk to you again. So you see how he can, whatever it is in your relationship, whether it's distant, circumstantial, kind of feely, touchy-feely, kind of like you're not really close, but you kind of have feelings, you know, and ideas, or whether it's coincidence, you know, where it's coincidental that, oh, well, that says that, and this says this, and I put the two together, and now I know God's will. Well, God gets you where he wants you to go one way or another. Now, the simplest way would be if you had just a personal conversation like Abraham and God were talking, or you and God were talking, and he said, I want you to get up, leave your family, go over to where I'm going to show you, you'll be blessed. Me personally, I've had those experiences. <laughs> God said, get up, leave your family, go to Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. I went, okay. So I lived in Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa parking lot, uh, daytime, <laughs> in my car. <laughs> Nighttime, I was living in the parks in Orange County until I got ran out by police. <laughs> it was the hippie days. And if I had to do it again today, I'd still do it. <laughs> Ask my wife. <laughs> but the point being is that God will speak to you, irregardless of how close or how far you are. The idea is you want to keep getting closer and closer and closer to where you hear His voice, so you no longer are tossed to and fro by every women doctrine that men so easily find themselves. But you learn to hear His voice, walk in His way, and to do His will as He leads you today. Listen to Jesus and he'll show you the way.